you know, all kinds of different tools and things, but I, I really haven't been doing anything on it in a year and a half, so I, <laughs> I might not be the right person to right. talk about, you know. Sure. So, is this, are we talking specifically about, we're talking specifically about Debian bugs, not just bug, not distributed bug trackers in general, or that's what you're interested in? Uh, both, both aspects. I mean, I'm specifically interested in Debian bugs, but I'm also interested in the, the problem set in general because they both are integrated. Yeah, so the, the, the big thing I see about, well, I feel like they're quite different problems since managing a single project of source code versus the entirety of Debian is different things. But it just occurred to me while I was sitting here that um, for Debian bugs, we kind of already have a distributed way of uh, distributing them, which is the package management system. So could we make a package that is open bugs? Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, so this is, that would just be a single one directional thing. And what, it we're, would, but what it we're looking at more is more of a, a way of subsetting different bugs and enabling them to uh, change sets to be transferred between them, reconciled, merged, how to reconcile state between all the different bug trackers, et but cetera. It seems like, I mean, it's a really, that seems like a really hard problem to solve if you're not sharing a, some sort of repository that is distributed. Well, y you would be because, I mean, at some level, you're working with other people on the same set of bugs. So, it, oops. But what if, but what, but what's, what's wrong with, what's wrong with having the, um, I mean, the email system be continually, continue to be used for submitting and, or manipulating the bugs, but then the, just all of the information about the current status of the bug be available in, like, a package. Um, I mean, so there's nothing wrong per se with that, but that's just a method of syncing back the changes via email, but you still have all the conflicts and everything else that's going on. So, I mean, these are all sort of what's going on with the, why this is an, an issue, why it would be interesting to be able to do it. And also, I mean, to share the changes with upstreams, et cetera. So, so can, can somebody give an overview of what were some of the ideas that were thrown out? So is, like, is there an idea of maintaining a, something like a Git repository that would, that would control the status of current open bugs or something like that? I, uh, maybe, Christine, do you want to talk a little bit? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I don't want to make you repeat your talk here in the <laughs> boff, so. Um, sorry, what was your? SD. Yeah, yeah, that's 1130. Uh, what was your specific question, or? I was just curious what Okay, I think, I guess we've talked about some different things. One thing is sort of like a standardized method for like passing data back and forth between different bug trackers. So like at this point, it's gonna be, like there are lots of different bug trackers out there. It, like people are probably not gonna stop using them. But if we had some standard method to query those bug trackers and get the, the data out of them and talk back and forth, then we could write our own tools that use that data and allow you to modify it locally and pass it back and forth. Sure. Um, but so pass data between different, but what different bug trackers? Different bug trackers of upstream? Like, like debugs, launchpad, bugzilla. Okay, like so everyone, everyone has their own different bug tracker, and they're pretty right. invested in those different. So, bug but trackers. those are all those are all upstream issues, not Debian specific issues. Right, but that seems like 
I mean, yeah, okay. I, so I can imagine that there are lots of different ways you could break it down. Like you could break down just worried about making Debian bugs distributed. You can worry about making the, the bugs for a specific upstream project distributed. Or you could do some sort of m meta thing where you're trying to make a distributed layer on top of all of the upstream bug trackers. Mm -hmm. That seems like a way more ambitious, I mean, maybe that's a useful thing to do, but it <laughs> seems pretty <laughs> ambitious. Well, I mean, I think eventually we do want all, oh, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Uh, first of all, we've got disconnected, I think. So um, I see more than you see and everyone else, and I see some changes from other people. Awesome. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, and um, about backtracking, so w what we have already marks that um, it's important for Debian users to see what other people discovered outside of Debian. Many bugs reported in Debian, they're not just about deployment of and problems with Debian packaging, but with issues of upstream, right? right. And o quite often they're already known upstream or somewhere else. If there was a way to kind of pull all that information together, that would have been terrific, right? Because then you report the bug, you have that the little... I think if it's already distributed, then it's kind of just one step aside, which m but if can the be. Upstream is not distributed, oh, yeah. But but that's what when we all talk about SD, I guess that's the whole purpose of it, that you can uh, first of all sync with other bug trackers and keep all together information. I'm not sure how merging would occur and how forwarding kind of back to a uh, remote will occur, but that's the whole idea that you just kind of keep this information together. I would be very curious to hear how somebody suggests putting a distributed bug tracking layer on top of a centralized bug tracker. Well, I mean, that's it's it'd be quite simple in the case of the BTS. I mean, you just provide a standardized right, but way. But, but we weren't but I thought that specifically it wasn't the BTS. Well, but that's an example of a, a centralized bug tracker. Right, but so we have control over the BTS. Sure, but but so do uh, all the upstreams. Yeah, Joey, you got it. If you're interested in doing distributed bug tracking over systems that you don't have control over, or you have the option of scraping, and then there's the option of doing some completely distributed thing where the um, upstream BTS doesn't have to know about the bugs and just link it with your bugs somehow. And I've been trying to think for, for quite a while of a way to do this and I haven't really come up with anything. I'm about two years. So I'm, I've kind of given up on that. And I'm just, th I just think that syncing and scraping and things that SD are doing are the right way or the only way at the moment. I mean, the other thing is, is that if we want an example of how you take a distributed system and make it interface with centralized systems, then you get SDN, right? I mean, that's it's the same problem. If the SDN server doesn't know anything at all about the fact that you're trying to do something distributed, and you write a conversion layer. So I, I guess beyond that, the other aspect is how do we do conflict resolution and how do we expose a uh, centralized layer or a, an abstraction of the states of bugs that are upstream and not. Um, fortunately, once I can try to get back online, I can maybe show what's going on with the Gobi. But um, one of the things that for me, I, at least I assume, the state that you care about for upstream bugs is whether the upstream bug has a patch in upstream, whether the upstream bug has been fixed already by an upload of a new version, whether the upstream bug Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, actually, it's pretty easy. Just okay. Okay. Yeah, just. Yeah, and then you can, it's called wired up here. But so. Um, so, well, hopefully, this will come back up. Um, so, the, I, the question is whether the bug is fixed whether the bug has a patch, whether the bug is still open, and whether upstream has it marked 
as they don't want to look at it, whether it's not a bug or won't fix. I think that's for a while I've been thinking those are the smallest set of federated changes that you want to change. And is that sort of reasonable with what you think, Christine? Is that about right? Or yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, how is SD doing with regards to scraping and or plugins and upstream bug trackers? I mean, I is there a standard now, or are you just still scraping everything? Uh, so most of the, the bridges to upstream bug trackers uh, in SD use like some sort of uh, like querying interface. Like Debugs has SOAP. Uh, some other places, some other things have like a REST interface. Um, in some cases, like Track, we're doing some really crazy hacky thing that involves scraping. Um, like it's unfortunate that this tends to be a kind of a lot of work uh, because you need to get the data that you want, <laughs> and sometimes the the upstream tracker doesn't give you that in a nice way. Um, so that so that's why I was talking about the whole like standardized thing. I know Lars and Don and I talked about this last year a little bit. Um, so if we had like a standardized way to query all this data, then we would have to write only one bridge instead of like fifty. <laughs> And, and just, yeah. just out of curiosity, are you are we talking just about tracking upstream bugs or actually modifying them? Well, I mean, at at first stage, just tracking is right. helpful, but it would be ideal to be able to do all of the above. So, I mean, I think in order to even consider being able to modify them in a distributed way, you have to know what the state is. So, I think that's state one. And once we get to that point, then we can consider replaying changes and stuff like that. As I mean, you'll probably talk more mm. about right, right. That's definitely the like the pie in the sky goal, right. uh, but like read only pulling down data is the first step. So, has anybody worked with some of the bug trackers that are more in tightly integrated with uh, VCS systems? So, I know there's a couple that uh, that work with that. I personally haven't worked with them, and I was sort of wondering if somebody here had done that and had found out how useful they were. So I didn't have to try it out myself. So can, so can somebody speak to that if they play with them? Um, I mean, I have a fair amount of experience using Track with SVN. Is that is that the kind of integration that you're talking about? Exactly. So uh, yeah, I mean, it <coughs> it it works. W it's it's nice for uh, end users who are, um, just because it provides relatively simple web linking between the uh, the revision states uh, that fix a bug, or if you put in comments, <coughs> and you can you can point to source code, you can point to uh, you know change sets uh, from the revision. So I, it, it's handy. I don't. I mean, you said that track was actually particularly hard to scrape. Uh, I can imagine. I mean, there's there's RSS feeds, but that's about. And I don't think they they contain any real detailed state. In right. The, the RSS current feed. the current thing just like does something crazy with like its web forms. I didn't write it, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there th there actually is. A, Track will produce RSS feeds, which might be slightly more intelligible than arbitrary scraping of, of HTML. But I don't think they include, you know, detailed state in the in the RSS. Sure. So, um, I know. I mean, I, f I find that I find it useful, but it's more useful from a sort of user interface perspective. I don't think Track has particularly good uh, ability to bind bug fixes with particular revision sets. It's just like it's in the it's in the comment history or something like that. I don't know how easy that right. would be to, f to figure it out. Wookie um, so it, it just occurred to me while that was mentioned that um, there's a thing called Scraper Wiki, which uh, is a general solution to this class of problem where you have a set of information available on various bits of the web, not necessarily in the same format, and what you want to do is coagulate that into uh, some kind of consistent database so that you can display and interrogate that. So that is exactly this problem. Uh, so Scraper Wiki is uh, both a site and a mechanism. So you go and write a scraper for a particular page, um, and uh, everybody does that for whichever thing they have to deal with, and then that's collected together, and then you can write um, views of the data you collected um, on the same place. So um, maybe we could use Scraper Wiki to do this thing of scraping various places, if that's the only way of getting the data. Because it's not, it's, not it's not the best way of getting data by a long chalk, but 
um, a standard place exists to do this, and it's really rather cool. Um, I, I just thought I'd point out, well, first, um, as far as things that just use a version control system and put bugs in it, I count, I count something like 12 or so listed the URL up there. Um, I've only looked at a couple of them. I never really found one that I liked. Um, I personally just use the KiwiKey and put the bugs in there, and that way I have them in, but that's very non, you, don't, you have to have another scraper for that. <laughs> but um, the other point I wanted to make is that there actually is one big distributed bug tracking system out there that is in wide use, which is the CVE identifiers, because um, you know it has a plethora of different distributions and things, different people reporting security holes, and they assign consistent IDs, you know, and that it's it's very basic, but that's sort of the current state of the art in some sense for a really, really distributed system between a lot of people who are never going to cooperate any other way. That's true. Okay, um, with that also, is there, um, the other things that I was looking at as well are the bug tracking systems which are directly tied to like a distributed versioning system. So in, in the case of, yeah, exactly, like Virtuoso or some of the other ones that are directly in a distributed VCS and then enable you to, to merge back changes. Oh, oh, okay, it's a wiki, sorry. <laughs> So has anybody used any of those that tie directly to any of the distributed bug trackers? Okay, so I, I guess I'm gonna have to try to play with that and figure out how those work and if they're uh, worth doing. So uh, how many of you work in a way where you're offline a lot, where it's hard for you to get back and connect to the VPS? Well, not for Debian work, yes, but for you know, my icky wiki type work and several other things now, it's all in that, so I just commit to Git, so it works fine, but for Debian, it's obviously an issue. Okay, so there's a, at least 10 hands in the audience, and we have, I think, about 15 or 20 people here. So at least half the people <laughs> do some serious offline work. Okay, so this is going to be useful. Um, does SD currently also export the comments, or is it primarily state? Uh, right now, my debug sync pulls state <laughs> comments. It's pretty alpha, but I'll talk about it at 11:30. Okay, but uh, is that and so SD in general is pulling comments. So okay. Okay, so those are sorts of the main questions that I wanted to to get at. Um, one of the secondary things is how to actually go about storing this. Um, so Lars and I'll try to uh, talk as if I was Lars about what exactly he was looking for um, in a distributed bug tracker. W what he basically wanted is something that looked like a mailbox. So you have a mail or a mail directory which has a bunch of series of comments in it which are pulled from all over the planet. So the upstream bugs that relates to this bug is there, the uh, Fedora, the Gen 2 comment of the bug, the Launchpad bug is there, the Debian bug is there, that all relates to the same bug. So you can see at a glance all the comments. You can then, using your mail reader or something similar or a specialized tool or whatever, write uh, your current uh, work on that bug, your patch set to this mailbox or whatever, run some sort of tool that then pushes all of the chain sets that you've made to a centralized place that you happen to work with, which may be dead bugs. Uh, then make those changes. Uh, possibly doing conflict resolution and or refusing to apply states that have already changed underneath you. Um, and then in the reverse, updating all the bugs that you're interested in with everything that's happening in the cloud. Um, so we've sort of been talking about this for a couple years now, I, th I think. Um, and neither Lars nor myself have actually managed to have enough time to seriously implement uh, any of these projects. So. Does anybody, I mean, is that something that you all would find useful, or uh, is somebody interested in, in working more on this with us? So it sounds like what most of what you're describing can just be handled with mail. Well, to some extent, but I mean, 
the pulling all the bugs in a way that is actually easy from all the upstream bug trackers that are around. So, but if you just had a, I mean, if you just had something that turned, something that just turned a particular upstream bug tracker into mail to a mailing list. Yeah, but then you'd have to be subscribed to it, and you'd have to deal with all that. Well, you have to be subscribed to it. If you want to track it, you're subscribed. That's the same thing as saying you're subscribed to it, right? Yeah, but then you also have to have been subscribed at the beginning. And it doesn't handle well, you can joining and leaving a bug particularly elegantly. So You can sync you know, mail, mail doors or well, uh, yeah. inboxes. So, so now you're back to the case where you have the same problem where you before you were actually subscribing to the bug using mailing list. But if you wanted, if you just wanted to, if you wanted to subscribe to a bug that you were not previously subscribed to, the first state would just be to sync the inbox. And then, and then, and, or sync the inbox simultaneously subscribe to the list for that bug. And then you would have the past state of the bug and then you would be receiving the new states. Y yeah, and so that would be one implementation. And my idea anyway is that that just syncing repeatedly would be a better way. But if somebody, I mean, implements it so it's easy, that you can say, hey, for bug X, you just drop this proc mail bit in that automatically figures out which bugs you're interested in, subscribe to these sets of mailing lists, and magically all the bugs that you care about will be in the right place, and it syncs down initially. That would at least be an initial. Or if you didn't want to, if you didn't want to receive the mail, then, I mean, then, if, if, like for instance, if the bugs in the BTS were available as a inbox that you could just download, then that would be similar to what you're talking about. Yeah, L and they are. So, the, I mean, you can download, currently you can download a mailbox for a bug. Uh, one of the things that's missing though is you, you can't very easily download mailboxes for a whole fleet of bugs. Uh, I mean, directly in the BTS. You can obviously write tools to do that. So. So that's all there. So what about the idea of just turning the upstream bugs into um, mailders or whatever that were similar to what the BTS is like? And then people could just sync whatever the, all of the mailders that they're interested in. Yeah, that would solve the, the sharing part of that problem. But I mean, th then on top of that, though, you still have the issue of state and tracking that. So in addition to having the comments, it's just one part of this, you also need some sort of format to share the state. Um, so there's some work, I guess, that Helio, Helios, I think I'm, I've got that right, is doing with the RDF format, uh, which is really, really complicated. Uh, it was hard for me to understand when I was reading it. But the idea is that all bug trackers will have this standard metadata that they're exporting so that it'll make things like what Christina's doing with SD easier, but it'll also enable you, assuming that you can store this metadata on disk and it's actually complete with regards to the features that the BTS has, for example, in debugs, um, that you could set and see the state. And you can also then presumably track the changes in that file in any sort of version tracker you wanted to um, and see how they've changed over time, how you've changed them, and then perhaps turn those chain sets back into whatever appropriate uh, chain system is, is needed to be made. I mean, I, I assume it would be amazing if the BTS, for example, could handle giving a diff for the new chain set that you wanted to apply and would just apply it, the changes between two different RDF schemas, for example, or something like that. I, I don't know if RDF is the, the right format for this to be in, but uh, it's at least one that people are sort of playing with now. Um, so to extend the analogy, you could, when, if the system that's turning the upstream bug tracker into mails could turn the state into something similar to what the controls, control states, right? Right, so one way that the BTS does this currently is if there's a, one of the options for the mailboxes is a, um, oh, let me pull that up for you just a second. So hopefully this is working. Um, so one of the options right now is this thing called a status inbox. And literally in the first message, it contains a, con a thing that looks like a control command. Um, so let's see if I can. Uh, blah, blah. Hopefully the 
this will work. Um, so assuming it's still working. Uh, okay, it doesn't seem to be working properly. Well, anyway, uh, if it was working properly, it has as the first message a um, the current status of the bug with a thing that looks like a control mail. So you can could literally just make an edit to that control mail and send the whole thing back to the BTS if you wanted to. The debugs now currently um, knows to ignore control options that are null options. So if your control option doesn't change anything, it just ignores it. Um, so it, it does currently support that uh, to, to at least some degree. So that would be one idea of a way of embedding the, the chain set and a way to share it back. So, okay. So are there any other things that I'm missing or things that would be good to discuss or problems that you guys have specifically with when you're working offline? I mean, I, I think if we can first, for starters, share the state, I think that's the most critical thing. Then if we can share the comments, that's the second most critical thing. Then if we can replay the state, I think that may be most critical thing number three. And then if we can s sanely merge and or replay comments that you've made, that would be most critical thing number four. And I think if we can do three and four, which is sort of, I, get, I agree, kind of pie in the sky, but we've sort of solved the, this problem of working in on the same issue using different bug trackers because they work better for you, uh, but in a, in a distributed fashion. So you can be offline, online, doesn't matter. Working in your own little web space. Um, and I think the more standardized, it, hopefully if we can get this standardized between at least more of the big players. So if Debian can do it, if Launchpad does it, if Bugzilla does it, for example, any of the Bugzillas do it, uh, if SD is able to do it, uh, then I think we may have enough of a, um, enough momentum at that point that all of the other bug trackers will say, uh, yes, track will do it then because, okay, everybody else is doing this um, and we'll have enough momentum to then, to then make it happen. So other than the... Um Sorry. No, that's right. Um, uh, yeah, okay. So I have another question or comment that I think we are discussing two things that are related but also a bit different. One is working offline and the other one is merging or relating bugs between different bug trackers. And for the second oh. thing, I'm asking myself, um, do we really want to just treat the same the bug about the same issue in the upstream bug tracker and in the <laughs> distribution bug tracker as one and the same bug? Or should there be somehow the different that you can see that's what upstream's doing on the bug and that's what Debian is doing on the bug because there might be a combination of a packaging issue and an upstream issue in the same bug or something like this? Yeah, th that's a good point. Um, so I, I don't yet know and have a good idea how to differentiate between the case where it's purely an upstream bug that also happens to be tracked in Debian and the case where it's a combination. Um, so, or, or as sometimes often happens, it's a, a bug that may be upstream, but it is solved uh, one way in Debian and one way. Yeah. I mean, it could be solved in Debian by one way. Or possibly one. upstreams don't want our comments. Right. So um, the I, I admittedly have somewhat of a weird uh, perspective on this because of the number of packages for which I'm both in uh, both Debian maintainer and upstream, but um, to me that's an instance of the general case of why I want a bug tracking system integrated with a VCS because to me to, from my perspective the package in Debian is a branch of upstream and if the bug is fixed in Debian one way and in upstream a different way, then you have a bug fixed two different ways on two different branches, which is a problem that I may also have in upstream. 
um, entirely in isolation of Debian. So it, it, what I really want is to be able to synchronize those bugs um, in such a way that when I merge a new upstream release, I merge the bug state uh, from upstream into, into Debian. Um, because by and large, the bug, bug state should be following the code. And if there are weird cases, then I can always change that after the fact. And, and this actually brings up a secondary issue that I sort of thought about as well, is how to relate particular bugs and their state back to versions in a distributed bug tracking system. Uh, like how to, to connect it back to what's going on in Git, because clearly you want to know that this bug was fixed in such and such a Git commit, and then it is fixed, presumably, in all descendants that also include that commit. Uh, and not fixed in anything before that. So, I mean, uh, this sort of issue of tracking and how do you know that, um, yeah, and how do you know in which cases the bug was fixed where, and also just even the, the history and the patch stack that you're operating with. Yeah, and for super special bonus points, the harder part, the harder problem, but the really cool idea would be is if you could cherry pick the fixing commit and have that also cherry pick the bug state. Which is a harder problem because it breaks your because it get, then doesn't have a clear line of development, but would be neat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, and I think one of these issues is one of the things that I would love to be able to do in debugs is to relate particular commits to a particular bug, and also particular commits to a particular version uh, in Debian, so that I know, oh, okay, yeah, this is, I mean. So you can, instead of just having the way version tracking works now, where you have this version is a descendant to the one before it, you also have this commit, or the state of your repository is a descendant of the one below. And what's sort of weird is that the way you would do that is different in every single uh, version tracking, well, not totally different, but in a lot of version tracking systems, it's different. Um, and so that's something that needs to be thought about. Yeah. If, you, if I recall correctly, last year in Casares, you presented something like an offline mode for debugs. Are you still working on this? Uh, so it's actually in the archive. It's called uh, debugs. The package name is debugs-local, and the uh, command is local debugs. So the command name, yeah. And so it exists. It's basically an exact copy of the BTS uh, running on your local system for bugs that you care about. So it only downloads the bugs that presumably you care about, like bugs you maintain, bugs you've emailed or corresponded with, bugs you've submitted, which is a, obviously a subset of bugs you've corresponded with, uh, and RC bugs by default. Uh, and you can, of course, expand that by adding arbitrary bug lists, arbitrary packages, anything that you care about. Um, and so, but that's really just for Debian, and it only really, it's kind of clunky and slow, and it looks exactly like a BTS. So you basically get the web interface to BTS on your machine. But it does synchronize your changes, local changes, uh, up to the BTS, or? Yes, because that works by you sending a mail. <laughs> 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 so it doesn't have to do anything to yeah. do the synchronous. That's exactly what I was saying was the yeah, but the problem with it as it exists right now is it doesn't make cha those changes that you've sent out in a mail to your local copy. So you, oh, okay. you have to queue up your <laughs> copies, your changes, then wait for them to round trip, which okay. is so obviously not optimal. Yeah. So I mean, some so way to make it, have it make local changes and then overwrite those changes after they've gone in, that would be really awesome. And uh, yeah, I don't know uh, if I'm going to be able to do that any time in the next couple of years. So, <laughs> but if somebody thinks that's really cool, that would be brilliant, and I, I would love to accept the patch that did that. So is anyone using it here? I, I, I am now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it just got in a usable state just recently because I've been lazy. Uh, and if you're installing a package, make sure you're installing the uh, experimental one version, not the experimental zero version. Uh, they both can be made to work, but it's more difficult with the experimental zero version. Uh, hopefully it's processed through the mirrors. Okay, well, I uploaded the one, and it got accepted. I, I should probably check and see why it hasn't been pushed out. Cool, and it's it's working for, for certain values of work. <laughs> okay. 
Anybody else? Russ? Or? So, okay, so we've sort of gotten at some of the things that I was concerned and interested in talking about. Is there anything in this area that we think we've missed that I should be aware of or no? So I, I, I really like the idea of, of distributing the bug states via the package manager. I think that's kind of cool. But you, as you said, one thing I didn't think about was the um, incorporating your changes right away. Um, but if you, if you could get the upstream bugs into packages in a similar way that debugs local is, that covers a lot of the space that you were describing, it seems to me. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, and I think with some of the work that's being done at, at with SD, um, that, that may be something that can be done. Uh, I just, honestly, part of the purpose of me standing up here and trying to organize this was so that I could learn about what the state was of everything without spending the time to go out and track down what everybody's been doing. Um, so. I'm very, very lazy. So, I'm hogging, totally hogging the microphone. Um, so, I was going to comment on the, when, when me and people I had worked with before had looked at uh, distributed bug trackers, one of the things that we um, came away with was that um, the, the UI is totally, uh, non-intuitive and weird for people who are not developers and um, so that's why we avoid that's sort of why we had decided for various reasons to avoid using those integrated things even though we I think as developers we would really like to do that but you know for our u for users that are not developers submitting a bug via a commit to a git repository is just not, is completely impossible. So getting back to your question about having tried th those integrated things. Right, okay, so yeah, so that is something honestly that I hadn't thought about, but quite seems to be I mean, the I case. I mean, I would I like to not have to worry about users. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> and I that's if it, in that regard. I assume too in a lot of those cases what happens is people send a, uh, a message to the mailing list or something and then people actually just commit it themselves. But right, but that doesn't allow them to easily track the state and stuff right. like that. Yeah, so I mean, to some extent though, providing a, a getting, converting a user input into a commit to a Git repository is uh, something that Joey has done in IkiWiki. I mean, you can do that. It's, it, it, the fact that it's a Git, git commit, commit under the hook doesn't mean that you can't put a UI in front of it. Yeah, yes, that's true. That's true. But none, none, of, the, none of the projects that we had looked at had anything like that. So yeah. yeah, we could have bolted something onto the top of it. Yeah, I think that it's an immaturity problem in the field as opposed to yeah, a problem with the basic underlying architecture. Yeah. yeah, I agree, I agree. Okay, anything else that I'm missing? Um, obviously, there's, uh, Joey's been running a uh, distributed bugs mailing list where some of these issues have been discussed a little bit. Uh, it's not as active, I think, as either of us would like. Uh, so, but if any of you are interested in, in this, that would be one place to uh, sign up. Uh, I know everybody who's <coughs> also inter this, interested in this should go to Christine's talk later, um, so you can hear more about that. Uh, are there any final questions or comments or anything before I put this away and uh, go and get some more water? <laughs> Maybe I should be drinking instead of talking. Okay, well, thank you all for waking up very early in the morning and actually tracking down where we were after this talk had bounced around from all possible positions, from being scheduled at the same time that I was talking to the same time that Joey was talking uh, to now. So thank you all for coming and talking and cluing me in to some of the things that are going on in distributed bug tracking. <laughs>